I know we were cut off because I ran out of memory. I didn't realize, and, and I don't know why it won't save to eternal storage. I was I was talking about this video with Rev Drawer anyway. I'll tell you this story that I was walking down Seminary Road in Manhattan, and this uh, this young seminarian he asked me why do you believe in God, and I discussed different things. And then he said, you know, let me tell you something. And I was dressed much more Hasidish than I am right now. And I still dress Hasidish if I'm going to shul or whatever. I'm going to work now. Uh, and he said that of all the religions, Judaism makes the most sense. But the thing that gets him about it is that if you have the truth, why don't you share it? Right? Why don't you keep it to yourself? You know, so many people think that, like, if you share Judaism, it's going to cause anti-Semitism. To me, I think, like, a lot of people are offended that the Jews are so spiritually selfish. The truth is, so many Jews aren't even religious, and that also offends a lot of people. You know, you expect, you're talking about the people that gave, a, that gave the world the Bible, right? And they're not even, you know, a lot of them don't even believe in anything. And so that's why I talk about someone being a, an ex-Jew. You know, and I talk about, you know, everyone knows my friend, Usher Meza, he likes to, to share Judaism with the world. Um, and then, you know, we talk about the seven Noahide laws, but still, like, do, do Muslims go around trying to convince people to be dimmies? Like, why, why why are we trying to convince people to have, like, a, a, a secondary status? They said, well, it's not a secondary status. That's how, how God created them in the Create them to be Jews. You create them to be to be Gentiles. Uh, like self called self. That's not really. That's not really what anybody believes. You know, I mean, we say that because it sounds politically correct. But I think it's more politically correct to say, well, you have a choice. And, and yes, you could go to heaven if you keep the seven laws of Noah. But it's much better to be to become a Jew if you're going to do it right and you're going to keep Shabbos. You can keep kosher and you believe. Uh, the thing is, if you don't believe, so you don't believe, so then there's nothing what to talk about, you know. But I'm saying someone actually believes in what we believe, 100%. I don't mean, you know, people who, who you know, they still want to hold on to their old religions, you know, but they also want to do that. But that comes to another, totally other issue, and that's really what it came down to. So I, in the previous video, I was talking about how this guy, Rap Drawer, he should be well, it seems like a nice guy. He's talking about things he really he admits he doesn't really know about. And again, this is what I do for a living, so this is what I know about. So he said, you know, there's some Christians, they believe in the Trinity, so they believe that Yashka is God, and so that's an idolatry, of course. And then there's some who just believe he's Mashiach, he's only the Messiah, but he's not God. So then that's not idolatry. But like I said in the previous video, <coughs> pretty much the vast majority of Christianity believes that Yashka is, 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 they make him into a good czar. And again, we discussed what's the meaning of these ideas of the Trinity, three and one, and obviously none of it makes sense. And so what they always say for their, for their, you know, religion is they said, well, you have to have a leap of faith. Certain things, you know, I mean, I remember I was sitting with a group of rabbis and a group of, of Christian clergy and, and theologians and so forth. And they admit it. it, it doesn't make any sense, but that's what they, you know, what can they do? That's what they have, and that's what it means to be a Christian. And if not, they, they'd have to find a different religion, you know. And, and we weren't there to convert them, and they weren't there to convert us. We were just talking to try to figure out, you know, to learn what are we talking about? What do, what what does one believe? What does the other believe? I think there was an imam there, too. I know he was there at certain times. And we would discuss these things, and we'd have these interfaith discussions just... Why not? You know, I know a lot of people say, oh, you can't do that. Is it? But there, there's a tachlis in it. And the, and the tachlis is the same thing that Raf Dror was talking about there. Is that we live in a world. We, we shouldn't discount just the whole world and, and just say that everybody else is, is, is pure evil and, there, and there's nothing to talk about. That's not the way that Jews conducted themselves for hundreds of years. Meaning pious good orthodox rabbis Gedolei Yisrael the, our great Achronim and some of the Rishonim and so forth they not even some, all the, all the Rishonim all the Achronim, they lived in an interfaith world, they understood if they had to defend their faith they had to defend it because they, they, you know, the Ramban wasn't looking 
to prevent the Christians from being Christian when he when he made the vakuach when he when he made the disputation is that the the Christians were trying to prevent him from being Jewish. So he had to defend himself. You know. But a lot of the other vikuchim that happened in the times when he showed him, in medieval times when there would be these disputations, generally speaking, uh, they were respectful, you know, meaning when they, you know, they'd have to defend things like their statements in the Talmud about someone named Yeshu, and it sounded somewhat similar to, to the Christian Jesus, so they were, and then so the, some of the Bali Toys would say, they said not everybody named Louis is the king of France, and not everybody named Yeshu is, is uh, even Yeshu Hanotvi, even uh, there, there, there could be more than one Yeshu even in Nazareth, or from Nazareth. So, the, uh, so that, that's what we have, but, but uh, the reason I was making the video was, again, this video that Rob Dror made last year where he said, essentially, that, uh, you know, there are the Christians who just believe that, that Yahshua is Mashiach, that he's not God. They're the only major Christian group that believes that, that believes Jesus was only a man and not God. Uh, and that he was the Messiah, but not God, are the Jehovah's Witnesses. And since J is not the letter, it's the, the actual letter is a U, but it's a Y, I don't have a problem pronouncing that, uh, halakhically speaking. But they... Um, uh, they believe that, you know, that Jesus is not God, which is really, if you read... The Christian Bible, what the, the books that the Christians added to the Bible, what they call their New Testament, uh, that's the plain reading of the text, meaning all of these ideas of Jesus actually being God. And again, you're reading these books, uh, reading through a Jewish lens, I would say, which would be how, I, as opposed to through a Greek lens, even though they were written in Greek, they were written by by Jews. Even they were horrible Jews, and these books don't belong in the Bible. And they were, uh, they were ignorant Jews also, but nonetheless, they were Jews. Um, they uh, these books, nonetheless, are you know. We, we, Christians tend to read them from a Christian perspective as opposed to just reading them in an unbiased way, right? And so that's where it comes out, that they, they have these beliefs, and, and also uh, many churches, uh, uh, particularly the traditional churches, the, the Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox churches, their theology is more than just what's in the Bible. It's what their traditions teach them, and so but the truth is, is that the mainline Protestant churches, uh, not only mainline, but the evangelical, all of them, accepted the Nicene Creed, and they believe in the Trinity. Um, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses is an aberration. It's a new church that started in America less than 200 years ago, um, well, 150 years ago. And that's where... And their belief is, again, more along the line of what we would say is not idolatrous. Uh, then you have another American church. And again, most Christians would say Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians because they reject the Trinity. And then you have the Mormons, uh, which is another American church about, uh, maybe now it's a little, old, a little over 200 years, around 200 years old, started in America. And the theology is radically different than uh, any other Christian denomination. They added even more books to their canon of scripture. And they reject the Trinity as well, but instead believe in multiple gods and, and, and a very large uh, pantheon of gods. And their belief about who even what they would call Heavenly Father, God the Father, is is radically different. It's really a, a more of a pagan ideology. Um, so, but what do we do with that? Meaning, and so, 
when I hear what Rav Dror is saying, it reminds me of a discussion that I heard on the radio a number of years ago. Actually, it was a Catholic radio show. And there were some priests talking about how does the Catholic Church <coughs> view non-Catholic Christians? And they said, you know, if a church has a Trinitarian mode of baptism, which is what, you know, what's going on here, most, most Christians, uh, Protestants and, and, and Eastern Orthodox, they're when they baptize somebody, they say it's in the name of, and then they mention the person's the Trinity, which is a verse in the Christian Bible, um, which a lot of people, what, you know, what they call the New Testament, which a lot of people, a lot of scholars opine was actually added later to the text, and it's not from the original text. But nonetheless, even if it is, it doesn't necessarily have to be interpreted theologically the way that the churches have. But the thing is, if they do, it's really none of my business because it's not my religion. You know, if they want to interpret it that way, that's that's what makes them Christian, that's what makes them Catholic or Protestant or whatever they are. So, but, but the, the idea the, the, that I want to bring out was like this, so that this priest was saying, that he will accept, you know, a, a Presbyterian or, or even an Anglican or, or, or even a, uh, a, 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 a Pentecostal or whatever, uh, because they, or a Baptist, because they baptize in the name of, of the Trinity and they believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, The, as opposed to the Mormons who reject that. And so a Catholic would say that a Mormon is not a Christian because they, their theology is so radically different than the other Christian churches. But he said, despite that, that doesn't mean that we have to hate them. doesn't mean we have to burn them at the stake, whether literally or figuratively. And it doesn't mean we can't be friends with them. We can just agree to disagree. And he said, just like they feel about, he, I mean, he didn't mention, but the th same thing, Jews and Muslims and everybody else uh, that are not Christians. And <clears throat> essentially, that idea, I'm not saying it because the Catholic priest said it, but I'm saying uh, that this is what I was taught by, by my rebellion. Not all of them, but some of them, particularly Rabbi Ariel Barzadok, he points out something very interesting. In Sefer Malachi, in the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 11, we're talking about a time in history where pretty much everybody was pagan. And it says, that it says, from the rising of the sun to the setting thereof, great is my name among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. And everywhere where they're making an offering, everywhere where they're bringing the sacrifice, it's to my name. It's a mincha tahora, it's a pure offering. So that means we're talking about the time when everybody was pagan. There were no Christians or Muslims, what Malachi was saying. This. And yet the people were. Um, worshiping idols, but God said they don't know any better. As long as they're good people, as long as they keep the other six laws of Noah, he'll pretty much forgive them essentially for that law, the law of, of idolatry. Because really they're trying to connect to him, but they don't know any better. And so God in his mercy accepts their worship as if they were worshiping him. The Gemara in Menachos discusses this because it says that many of, by the time by the time of the Talmud, many of the nations around the Jewish communities actually worshipped the God of Israel. Worshipped the true God. And they had respect for the Jewish people. And I don't know if he was talking about Christians or other groups, 
because uh, by that time, at the time of the Talmud, there were Christians. Um, but they, then they said beyond a certain area, they were ignorant of the, the God of Israel. And if that's the case, so then, you know, uh, you know what, what are we talking about there? So anyway, the point that I was bringing out there is that then the Gemara says, wait, it says everywhere in the whole, in the whole world, uh, God's name is great. So then he says, because essentially all the nations of the world recognize that the Creator is the God of the gods. Meaning that that there is one supreme God, the Creator, that, ev- that everybody should recognize. And then, be- and then uh, beyond that, they believe in these lower deities that are in a different category, whether we would call them angels or demons or whatever they are, that do not deserve worship. Uh, but that the other pagans, they worship these beings um, because of, out of ignorance or, or, or out of another, that's their spirituality. And even the Pesach in, 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 the, in the Chumash, I think it's in Parshish Veschana, it says, I, or maybe Akev, it was a few weeks ago, in, in the, it's in Deuteronomy, it says, Eshechol Hashem, that Hashem apportioned out these gods to the other nations to worship out of their ignorance. They don't know any better. So God apportions the nation other gods that they can revere and worship and fellowship with. Uh, although uh, there is a, a, a homiletic interpretation of it that Asheholak means uh, smooth, that they, they, they can slide like a smooth slide, they can slide into the sin of idolatry because of God's special relationship with Israel. And the other nations don't don't have that, and so. On. But still, essentially, the simple meaning of both of these verses, and Rabbi Hertz and his chumash explains this, and Rabbi Bart Sadok today, who I consider to be one of my rabbi, even though I only met him once, I talked to him on the phone two or three times, uh, email him here and there. He he explains that this is pshat, is that there is an idea in Judaism of having tolerance for other religions, and even having respect for the other religions, uh, because essentially God sees it, uh, as long as they're good people, that they are essentially worshiping him, because they just don't know any better. And so, with all due respect to Rav Dror, and I understand that he means very well with what he's saying, it doesn't matter if a Christian is a Trinitarian or a non-Trinitarian. If he believe, if he, if he believes Yashka they make him to a Vajazara or not. If they don't know any better, uh, and they're good people, uh, God accepts it because he, they don't know any better. You know, and so and so this whole idea, this thing that we're looking into the theology and this and that, and trying to figure out, <coughs> you know, does Christianity meet the ideas of the Sheva Mitzvah? Does Islam? Islam pretty much does. And then and then, but what about the Hindus? And what about the Buddhists? And what about all these others? And oh, I remember Rav Shiva, who should know better. He said, "Oh, Buddhists, they're all that, that's idolatry." Well, there are atheist Buddhists. So uh, Buddhism can be just a, a, a philosophy without being a religion. It depends on their different types of Buddhism. You know, you, you got to be educated before you make these statements. Meaning Avram Avinu had a Masech of Vajasara, a 400 prakim. Meaning if, if, if you don't want to talk about these things, you don't want to, fine, just stick to yourself. Don't, don't bring these things up. But if you're going to make a statement about something, you got to know what you're talking about. So that's what what I have to share here. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Comment. uh, Again, I believe there's only one God. I believe Torah Judaism is 100% the true religion. I don't believe in any of other religions. You have to live in a pragmatic world to understand not everybody in the world is going to be an Orthodox Jew or a Noahide. 
there are going to be reformed Jews and conservative Jews. There are going to be people that we disagree with. And we got to figure out how to agree to disagree, which battles to fight, how and when. That's what I'm talking about. You know, when we're, when we're faced with a threat of the left, which is different than the liberals, that want to destroy everything. And if we can find common ground with Christians and Muslims and Hindus and others, and even some libertarian atheists who are liberal but not leftist, but are classically liberal, and we can find what do we have in common against this attack of that's trying to destroy everything that we have, take away our religious freedom, take away our whole way of life. Uh, when it comes to these types of things, we have to find allies that we can agree to disagree with. We can't insist my way or the highway because it's not going to work that way. And these extremists who want to just brand everybody who is not exactly 100% agreeing with them as heretics, that's first of all idiotic. But then beyond that, so what if they are a heretic? It doesn't mean we're burning them at the stake. It doesn't mean we're canceling them necessarily. If we can find other things that we can agree with and, and find something to balance with, we're at a point in history where we have to do that, but it's always been that way. We can't just keep to ourselves because maybe we'll find some people who are looking for the truth and are looking for our path, and maybe we'll accept it. And if you're not... <coughs> if you if you're so closed from the world that you're not going to do that, what do you? How are you going to? How are you going to live this world? How are you going to? You know, and, and especially, all right. So you keep to yourselves and you don't go and talk to them. But then you have these people calling everybody else a heretic. This and that to try to start a program. You're going to cause anti-Semitism. This is not how things work. Thank you for watching. God bless. <coughs> Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. I'm kind of losing my voice already. I got a lot of learning to do. I didn't expect to make this long a video. All right, take care.